Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back. Another week, another case. Rachel's back this time, uh, and she's got a case for us. Hit it. All right. We have a 32-year-old female with past medical history of biliary colic, complaining of persistent abdominal pain. She says the pain is crampy and intermittent for about five months, but mm -hmm. is now constant piercing, unresolving. She reports the pain to be in the right upper quadrant and the epigastrum occasionally kind of radiates down the abdomen to the left lower quadrant. Over time, the pain went from cramping, dull, there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes and resolving, uh, to getting worse and worse with each episode, okay. to, up until this point where it's not resolving, it's not. Um, this morning, she had a subjective fever, she had chills, but of course people don't take temperatures at home, so she just came to the ER concerned. Mm -hmm. That was her only systemic symptom. You know, she had no nausea, no vomiting, no changes to her bowel habits, no chest pain, no shortness of breath, no urinary symptoms, no GYN symptoms. You know, her last menstrual period was about like a week or so ago. Yep. So unremarkable, unremarkable otherwise. Yeah. Okay. So when we went down to see her, you know, she was afebrile, vital signs have been stable. Um, her physical exam was rather benign, except for her abdomen, mm -hmm. you know, the area of concern. She's soft, non-distended, tender to the right upper quadrant, tender to the epigastrum. She had a positive Murphy's sign. Okay. Uh, with all that, we sent off some labs. Her CBC was normal. Her BMP was normal. What interested us, or what caught our attention, her hepatic panel, her ALT, AST, ALK, FOSS, all of it was elevated. You know, her ALT was 124. Her AST is about 130. Her ALK FOSS was about 270, and her white pace was over 4,000. Is it normal, like under 100? Yep, like under 100. <clears throat> wow. So a lot going on there. Um, well, before we get started, this is a common pimp question. What is a Murphy sign? Settle it for us. Are you pimping me? <laughs> what, is it, what is a positive Murphy sign? Uh, with palpation. In the right upper quadrant, ideally, you want to go where the gallbladder would be. So at the inferior border of the liver, um, a halt in inspiration right. during palpation. So if the patient says, ow, that hurts, it's not a positive Murphy sign. But if they're talking to you or you ask them to take a deep breath and all of a sudden they go, <gasps> it's positive. Positive Murphy sign, halt in inspiration, not pain to palpate. Correct. So with the positive Murphy sign... Obviously, gallbladder pathology, mm -hmm. um, but with a lipase of 4,000, now you're thinking gallbladder and pancreatitis, and in that Venn diagram in the middle, you have cholangitis, cholodocolithiasis, yeah. um, and then what throws me off is now you have elevated liver enzyme, high AST, ALT, so separately also I'm thinking of uh, liver pathology like hepatitis, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, uh, perhaps cirrhosis. Usually ALT, AST is normal in cirrhosis. Um, what else? Covered gallbladder, pancreas, liver. Maybe a tumor cyst on yeah. the liver. Maybe the pancreas. Cyst on the pancreas. Um, so we take all of this and what's in the middle of the Venn diagram? What so you know? What did you do? So we did an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. You know, best way, quickest way, most benign way yep. of looking at the gallbladder. Um, unfortunately, the gallbladder was in a contracted state, which makes it difficult to fully visualize. But what we could see was cholelithiasis with chronic cholecystitis, a positive Murphy sign, and a wall echo shadow sign. Wait, time out. All right. That's so much going on. First of all, how did you know it was chronic cholecystitis as opposed to acute cholecystitis? So acute cholecystitis, your gallbladder is inflamed. There's pericholecystic fluid. The gallbladder wall is thickened. Mm -hmm. um, this gallbladder was quite contracted, and that's a great sign of chronic cholecystitis. You won't get that with acute cholecystitis. Okay. So, what, yeah, go ahead. That's also it's going to give you the positive wall echo shadow sign, which I didn't know what that meant. In all honesty, we had to talk to the radiologist. Radio yeah. 
And that essentially just means that there's large stones or just stones in a contracted gallbladder because you're unable to fully visualize, like pick out one, two, three, four, five stones as you would in a normal gallbladder. So acute cholecystitis, you would see inflamed gallbladder, chronic cholecystitis, a shriveled gallbladder. Mm -hmm. uh, then you saw cholothiasis. From the wall echo shadow from sign. The wall echo. And then a positive Murphy's. Is this any different than your physical exam positive Murphy sign? So when you're doing a positive Murphy sign, what you want to do is compress the gallbladder. With the sonographic Murphy sign, you can visualize on ultrasound with the probe the compression of the gallbladder as you push down. So yeah. So a ultrasound positive Murphy sign is more specific than the physical exam positive Murphy sign. Exactly. Because you can visualize mm -hmm. it and you're you know what you're Okay, um, <laughs> where do you go from here? So like you said, there's a lot going on in the ultrasound. There's a lot going on with the labs. Yeah. Uh, so we did an MRCP just to kind of more accurately depict what's going on between the liver, gallbladder, pancreas, get a better reading of the biliary tree. So now you're taking everything independently, putting it on one screen, essentially. Getting yeah. the whole picture. Yeah, getting a fuller picture. Yeah. Um, what did the MRCP show? There's also a lot going on in the MRCP. Wait, before we start, uh, let's talk about MRCP. What is an MRCP? It's an MRI of the billiard. And when would you get it? When you're concerned about billiard tree pathology. If you're worried about cholidocolithiasis, if you think there's a stone somewhere in there, if you think there is something compressing the billiard tree, if you want to evaluate a stent that's been placed. Yeah. What do you see on the MRCP? MRCP, we see chronic cholecystitis secondary to cholothiasis, mild CBD enhancement and dilatation, likely due to a past stone, mm -hmm. and acute pancreatitis. No CBD stones. No stones, but you did see dilatation. Mm -hmm. And that just means that the stone is passed. Yeah. So... I mean, acute pancreatitis is something we expected mm -hmm. with the high lipase. Uh, chronic cholecystitis we already knew about due to the ultrasound, also the col cholothiasis. The CBD enhancements is something new. So now we have another addition to our big puzzle. Yeah. Kind of the missing piece. Right, exactly. And so, logistically, lay this out for us. How does this work? So, patient has a gallbladder, maybe she's a fatty diet, maybe, who knows, she has gallstones. Mm -hmm. She has cholothiasis. It's been going on for five months, so her gallbladder is essentially been doing this for five months. Mm -hmm. It's now turned into this, as we're passing stones the entire time. Okay. Likely passed a larger stone. Went through the biliary tree. Somehow was able to get through the ambulovator, yeah. which you can do, you can pass stones. But the stone passing through the ducts is Close what caused the, the dilatation. Door. Titus. Wow. But they should no CBD stones, so that's a plus. So no ERCP? No ERCP. She did not have to undergo an ERCP. Which comes with a When we go to the next step of treatment, what is our priority? I'm assuming you want to get rid of the acute stuff first, mm -hmm. so we have acute pancreatitis, right? Um, usually the treatment is NPO, IVF, IV fluids, and uh, wait for the, the lipase to go down. Yeah. Is that what you did? Exactly what we did. So, you know, she was admitted. She was started on high-rate fluids. She was kept NPO until she was wanted to eat, until we saw the and the, her lipase starting to go down. Uh, she got some clears once her lipase fully resolved, and she didn't show um, symptoms of her pancreatitis yep. or of being ill, she had a cholecystectomy. But because she's had so many stones in the gallbladder, because it was so contracted, yeah. uh, they had to shoot, well, most of the time they do, they shoot a intraoperative cholangiogram, even with routine cholies, just kind of make and sure so that... there's no stones in the, the tree, the biliary mm -hmm. tree. Okay. And did she? No stones. No stones. No stones. So, cholecystectomy, go home. Out. All right. Um, cool. Yeah. 
So, with this patient, the follow up as normal with any cholecystectomy, pancreatitis. Just as if she had cholecystitis. Okay. Right. Acute cholecystitis or just an elective cole. Same thing. Come back in two weeks and we'll see how you're doing. Awesome. I like it. Well, that is it, guys. That's, that ends the case for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do like it, if you find something fascinating about this case, please comment below. Uh, tell us how you would change the, the plan for this patient. And last but not least, please subscribe so you can follow us every Tuesday. We almost have a case every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you next week. Peace out.